Good morning, folks. Just in case you haven't seen it yet, this is the fireball that lit up the skies over southern Asia just over a day ago. It was part of the annual shower at this time, rather than the asteroid everyone was clamoring about for Halloween, but it still managed to be an incredible sight. Okay, so let's remember our last words on the departing sunspot group on steroids from yesterday. Who bets that he fires after leaving geo-effective position? Let's see what happened early this morning. Another miss. Earth facing quiet wins again. Let's come to spaceweathernews.com and find that eruption did hit M class, but leaves the Earth facing spots with little else to spare. This group is in decay. Silence from the big guy facing Earth, and we have a new grouping as well. Not much to analyze at this time, however. The coronal hole stream in the solar wind continued impacting Earth, but lower density to the stream has caused the magnetic storms to level off, and we haven't seen worse than those level 1 events. Coronal holes. Massive. Still coming and coming. This is all northern polar coronal hole extensions, and overnight a large bulge towards the equator in the rear turned the corner to begin to face Earth. IMF power facing Earth began to surge as well, Forecast is for that yellow to move to red soon. In the meantime, we had another unusual location event with a 4.8 in the Eastern Caribbean. A much larger, but not necessarily that rare of an event struck Indonesia as well. They're actually used to much worse than that. But nearby, we also saw a volcanic eruption, so perhaps this is indicative of a larger shift nearby. Sticking with RSOE leads us up to radioactive cesium and honey in northern UK near a nuclear plant. Government has expressly said they've begun investigating leak and contamination possibilities. We're now getting some photos in from Yemen where that major cyclone hit. Apparently 1.4 of the 1.8 million people who live in the affected area are now in desperate need of aid. The post-storm situation begins unfolding now. Folks, this is the beginning of a climate extremes event. For those who are new here, the most underreported aspect of climate change is that the high pressure is higher and the lows are lower. This means more energy, more potential, warmer air slamming into colder air, stronger storms, fast and drastic temperature swings over just a few days time. Look at the air movement on either side of the storm line here, up and down. It may not fully kick in until tomorrow night, but it will begin to ramp up today. A powerful low-pressure earth spot is going to cut through the United States, and with the wind drive reinforced by nearby high-pressure nodes, they'll be driving one of those incredible temperature swings from just ahead, east to just behind, west of the line of severe storms that will be produced in the middle of opposing extreme temperatures. So this is the climate extremes event coming to the U.S. Way too hot for the season, then big time storms, then a rapid shift to colder temperatures. Snow is expected to be involved, and the event should last through the weekend as the system travels eastward. Europe actually going to see something similar. A powerful earth spot out to sea is pulling in warmer air followed by storms. While to the east, we see the last system that came through driving cold air way down south. Look at that temperature swing. When we come down under, let's have eyes on the lows so we can have zero surprise as to where the storms are going. After that, we've got your current conditions focused on a long storm line affecting Africa and Madagascar. Then we've got shots of our star to close. It's 5.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.